Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, Mishmash Monday. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to get to today. Uh, first off, first thing I want to start off with is uh, in reference to our last video we did, I asked you, we had a, a little story about an orange, my orange crush liking and experience, and I showed you a screenshot of some older orange crush cans and said, pick out which can is your favorite. I was absolutely blown away at 90% of you, almost a vast majority, picked the 1981 can, which I was shocked. You know, I was, and nobody, we didn't talk about any, there was 14 cans to choose from, yet the majority of you chose the 1981 can. Secondly, uh, in second place was actually my favorite, 1965. And again, I was shocked that we didn't talk about any of the designs of these cans or anything, yet 1965 came in second. And third was 1972, another nice can. But I thought that was pretty interesting how we all kind of generated in the same way. But 1981, boy, that really took off. And uh, so thanks so much for, for letting us know in the comments what your favorite was. And like I said, we got a bunch of other things to talk about today. Uh, this weekend was a busy weekend also because there was a couple shows going on. There was the Jacktown show in Bangor, Pennsylvania. And uh, also the one I attended was Zagre Antique and Farm Machinery Show in Colchester, Connecticut. Now, it was a little bit warm, but it wasn't overly hot, not like last year. Um, but I have to tell you, the turnout was fantastic in, in Zagre. I don't know what it was like over in, uh, in, in Jacktown. I hit Jacktown show about three times a year and I try and hit the, uh, Colchester show at least twice a year. But this weekend, actually they, you know, they fell on the same date. So you have to pick and choose one. Um, I'm looking forward to see what some of the guys picked up at Jacktown. Hopefully they'll have some footage. And I shot just a little bit of footage here just to show you some of the fantastic deals, uh, over at the Zagre. So check this out. Now this is what Zagre looks like. It's 7.30 in the morning, but you can see there's quite a bit of cars here. Normally not that many cars are here at that time at the summer show. So it was gonna be a busy show today. We missed out the last show because of a rain or cold weather. And we're looking forward to this one today. The first place you gotta see is Bob's discount tools and stuff. He's unbelievable. Everything on this table, a dollar. He has like dollar, two dollar, five dollar. Most of his stuff goes for fifty cents or less. Uh, over here, you can see he has lined that. I don't think he has anything over five dollars on uh, that he sells. Everything is super cheap. Um, you want to see something interesting? Look in the upper left hand corner. You see that uh, shopping cart? We had a kick looking at that. That looks like a real old timey shopping cart. You don't see those anymore. But. Uh, you can see everybody comes here, fills up. Now, we were here on Saturday, and I heard Friday night somebody bought a ton of stuff from Bob. So it was already picked through. Everything you see here is a dollar. This is the dollar table. You know, and you could just imagine all the stuff that was already sold. So we're just seeing what's picked through. Uh, everything you're looking at here is 50 cents. Screwdrivers, pliers, you just got to dig through it. It's just amazing what's here. It's all kinds of great stuff Bob has. Now, here's an interesting Parker number 94 lever vise. I've never seen one before. He wanted over $300 for it, but what a beautiful vise that was.
Now, this gentleman had some really good prices here and some interesting things. But if you look over here, look at his vices. Here, $10 vices. And look at the size. They're nice size vices. And look at those blacksmith vices for $28. How could you beat that? Now here's a nice lamp that I really looked at and uh, I was salivating over, but uh, the price was a little bit over $300, too rich for my blood, but I have a similar lamp and I just love these lights. Now, our friend Brian is a vendor there. This is his uh, couple tables. He has a couple spots. He has such fantastic tools. You have to say hello to him if ever you go here. He has a couple different uh, tarps, things like that. This gentleman driving this tractor was having such a great time with these kids. He was really enjoying it, and so were the kids. I think it's definitely... No, I know. See those two radios there? Those are nice radios. 20 bucks a now, it wasn't long while we were there. I met up with Ken and Rick, and uh, we were having a great time. And then also I met up with a, a new uh, Adam. It was his first time there, his first time going to the show, and he only lives about a half hour from there. So he loved it. It won't be his last, that's for sure. And if ever you get a chance to go to one of these shows, I promise you, you will have a great time. And then I met another, you know, Rick Ross came in towards the end when I was leaving, saw Rick. So a lot of people showed up. It was, it was really nice, uh, nice time to walk around with everybody and see what we got. Let me show you a couple things I picked up, just a couple. Now, as you know, I stopped buying tools and this is the, but I, I couldn't pass this by. I, I looked at this and you know what this is. This is, uh, we use this for as old fashioned tire spanner. Uh, and this one here, lug wrench, is, look at the size of this. This is like one inch. It's huge. It's made for trucks. And I just thought about my dad because my dad was a, a bull. And, you know, he would use these, not this particular one. This, like I said, is made for trucks. But he would use these lug wrenches and he would spin off those lug nuts so fast and drop them into the hubcap. That tire was off the car in seconds. And I always loved watching him, you know, hold it and spin it, you know, like our dad used to. And let me show you, this thing is so big. Let me show you how much this thing weighs. Now, this thing weighs in at over 14 and a half pounds. So can you imagine holding on and swinging this tool every day, especially if you're doing tires? You know what a job that is. I'll tell you, that'll really make a man out of you. Now, even though I stopped buying tools, I got to tell you, the 50 cent table is, is something I just enjoy picking through and... and um, there's such great deals. I was looking through the video and I was like, I can't even believe I missed that. I missed that. I missed this. Like, for example, you know, I pick up these chips. These are great to practice on, especially if you want to practice uh, learning how to hone your chisels. And here's one. A, a great look at this nice Buck Brothers, right? Nice chisel. This will clean up beautiful. But the the, t the, yeah, the tip, right? Now you say, oh, God, that tip looks bad. That's you'll get this looking perfect. In no time at all, and it's great practice. Um, full set of uh, Craftsman Allen keys. The only one that's missing is the smallest one. You know, these are always good. Again, 50 cents. You know, the, the quick wedge screwdrivers that if this wouldn't have been here, if uh, if 357 Magdad was at this show. But these things are great. Once you start using them, they're awesome. Uh, Ken picked this one out for me. He says, oh, John, check it out. Isn't that? And sure enough, a snap cut by Seymour Smith. The original, these things are absolutely great. They clean up like unbelievable. Uh, and then I found some unusual tool. Look at this beautiful quality. It looks similar to a kind of screwdriver to a golf ball, right? Beautiful screwdriver. This one here, the, the weight of it, the quality. This is a real nice one. We couldn't figure out what this was and want to ask you what you think. This to me, it almost looks homemade. Check this out. It looks, I said it looks like a combination electrician's tool. 
This would be for the, the switch plate, right? That small screwdriver. This would be a wire stripper here. See that little groove, that sharpen? You would strip your wires. And this one here for the larger insulation uh, would be a small knife. So I don't know. What do you think? Have you ever seen one of these tools before? It's uh, very nice, but again, I had to pick it up. Another uh, unusual one I've seen. Look at this. This is a, what is that, a Williams? Yeah, Williams. I've never seen one of these before, but look at look at the, the handle, right? The embellishment on the handle. Look how thin this thing is. It's super thin to get in there, you know, if you had to. I've never seen one of these before. We got to do a cleanup on this one, but I got a whole bunch of these type of tools. I just love it. I, at those 50 cent and dollar tables, you can have such a good time. Now, next up, you remember last uh, episode, Joel Jacobson sent in some great stuff. We did the hammer that he sent in. Let me show you that real quick. And I, also, I want to talk about one of the other tools he sent in. Let me show you the hammer. I'm pretty much finished with it. Now, this was the hammer Joel sent over. A nice, long-handled, ball-peen hammer. So we had some fun with it. And this is how we uh, more or less finished this one out. Again, uh, I still have to... Do a little polishing and wax the handle, but I'm waiting. The paint, enamel paint has to dry for a long time, but you could see I just like to embellish it with a little bit of color here, a uh, little red around here. We linseed oiled the top there, first uh, coat, but you could see how we did this. And I, I just like that look, you know, that's just me personally. You could do these in so many different colors. They're such beautiful hammers. I, I uh, stained this with the gunstock stain and then two coats of uh, amber shellac. And then, uh, you know, again, I will wax this, you know, to give it that feel. But it's just a, it's beautiful, isn't it? And, uh, you know, I know Joel likes uh, he hammers. He has a bunch. But uh, this one here, I just enjoyed this one. Now, uh, I weighed this. You can see here what it weighs. And uh, it, like I said, it's a pretty large uh, ball-peen hammer. You can see by the weight there. Um, and now, if you're wondering about how these hold up after I do it or something like that, the reason I put the paint in there, because it never touches... When you lay it down and stuff, it touches here, it touches here. The paint holds up, and I'll show you. I did this hammer, I don't know, is it a couple years ago already that I did that uh, short-handled hammer challenge? And this one is, I use this on almost like a daily basis. This thing I use so much, and I love this. I love this handle length. Now, here's the one we just did, and look at the length. But this is a bigger head, but... This length is such a great length. I, I use this hammer all the time. Love that one. Uh, sometimes if I need, sometimes I use this one. Remember we did this, just showing you the wire wrapping because that one was split. And that was an old time fix. They used to wrap it. So I like to use this one just, you know, for the way it is, just for fun. But uh, again, if I need something, I, I'm not a fan of this thin design. I still, I don't understand. You know, people say shock absorbing. If you're tapping something, you know, peening, you're not getting tremendous shock anyway. It's just, it always boggled my mind. And that's why they're always split and broken. But uh, I've been using this one a lot lately. And I didn't finish this one yet because I just started using it. Boy, this is this has a nice, I, I don't know if it's because the weight is up further. I mean, when you start using a hammer for a while, all of a sudden you'll pick up and you go, I just like the way it feels. And if you notice, this head is real close to the top compared to this you have a little weight past the head so that can make all the difference in the world when you're tapping or peening and again i want to thank joe for sending that hammer in but uh again we're still in the dark about what this is now I'll, I'll tell you what a couple people have been writing in you know first of all a few people said that's to separate battery terminals i disagree I, you know if you have ever seen a battery separator tool which i have one I, it's in my battery kit uh it's meant to open parallel it's a pair of pliers, and they're, they're heavy duty, and they open this way, you know, parallel, like that. This one here would open one end more than the other. And what battery terminals are this small? You know, it's much larger. Again, this one says wheel tight, so we're assuming it has something to do with wheels. So I think the battery terminal thing is out. Um, whatever it is, it's meant, you know, when you open it, you get the press. So obviously this wouldn't be the put on so like people said to pull a valve through the the hole of the rim there's actually tools for that that thread on i have that tool you thread it on to the valve and you pull it through that way they even got ones with cable on it which if you have to fish it through and you know you could pull it through and they work great but you need a lot of force this would never hold on to that so it can't be that 
Uh, we're still trying to figure out what it is. Again, wheel tight. Here's the name, Tatona. Or I don't even know what that is. It's got a rivet there that passes through. It's, uh, we can't figure it out. I know it's got some, there's no markings on here. So if it was meant to open up something, this would be scraped up. Uh, again, light, it's very, it's very light. It's not meant for heavy duty work. What the heck is this tool? Just, uh, just throwing that out there again. Next up, my good buddy, Rich, you know him from Snap Ring Chronicles. He's been killing the yard and tag sales too. Competition with Tom Gunn, but look what he sent over. He said, I thought you'd get a kick out of this and I surely do. You see what's this? This is a, you know, it's obviously an F wrench, but it's like an advertisement giveaway. But here's what's so cool about it is, look at the size. Is that not cute? Look at that. It's a, uh, and it's a working, it's not, not, you know, not a joking wrench. It really actually works and has, you know, good tolerances that you could use it for small nuts or whatever. And you can see here the writing on this is Midway Radio TV. Uh, they used to have a thing called, you can see the, the address there. Let me zoom in over here. 60 West 45th Street. There used to be a, a, thing, a place called Radio Row years ago. Uh, all surplus in, in New York City that you can get all kinds of electronics and sur people used to come from all over. And uh, that was one of the shops that they used to have there. So I think that's real cool. Rich, thank you so much for that. Okay, next up, I was watching my buddy CP, the tool addict. He has a great uh, channel on all kinds. These, these young guys today, they really know this stuff about tools and new tools, especially if you turn wrenches for a living. You know, they, they're, they're not like the old guys that would uh, wear a tool out. These guys buy the cutting edge stuff. He was he always does tool reviews. He, he showed this tool. And when he did, I said, oh, my God, look at this thing. Look at this scraper. It's a carbide tip. Let me take the tip, uh, the protective coating off. Carbide tip. You see that? And this thing is just the cat's pajamas. And they're not cheap. They're, I, I went, I said, I want one of those. But when I looked at what they cost, I was like, uh-oh. I might have to wait. I went on eBay and I found one. I got this for $15, which is probably, you know, a decent price for the two. But, you know, well below the market value. But let me show you what's so great about this tool and why you need a good scraper. Now, I have a question for you. What kind of maniac just has one scraper? <laughs> you know, you need... Depending on what you're doing, if you're a tool guy, you know, there's different scrapers for different things. You know, you got to take the inspection inspection sticker off your car, you know, or you got to do something yourself. I know we all let the guy do it at the shop now, but, you know, there are times when you need to do something. You know, we have razor blade scrapers, especially if you're working with gaskets. If you're working with gaskets on a, a cast iron surface that you have to... You know, you want to keep that true and level. The last thing you want to do is take like a flap sander or something to get the gasket plate because you're going to make uneven uh, surface. And that'll that's the whole reason you put gaskets there to take up the unevenness. But, you know, you want to keep it as even as you can and get the gunk off. So there are different kind of scrapers. You know, these, you know, putty knives come in different. If you see, they come in different thicknesses. Some are very flexible great for putting in putty and things like that and a lot of people use these for scrapers or whatever depending on how thick you get them you know they they be they you can get them very thick and very rigid you know and make decent scrapers but you know you have to kind of t sharpen up they could dig in not the most ideal thing we have the uh, razor scrapers which are great for uh, you know stickers things like that to get off and you can use it for some gasket material but again you got to be careful and uh these are these here. We've all had these. These are the old time ones. These are, you know, eh, they they work, but they're not so good. And, you, and it's funny because once you start off with a cheap one and you go to a better one, you work your way up, then you get one of these type, you know, that open up, and uh, you know this is like a step up from there. The real step up, especially if you do inspection stickers or anything like that, is this beautiful Lyle, and it's got a a container in the back here for your extra blades. And you see, you take this like this, you put your blade in here, and it's got that angle that gets right in there, you know, into the windshield. And this is just a, you know, this is a must-have tool. Lyle makes some good stuff. They've been around for a long time. But with all these scrapers and everything, they all have their use. But when I saw this, wow. Now, what you would use something like this for, because it has a, a carbide. And again, this edge here is what makes that edge, that 90-degree 
angle is is the edge that's what makes the edge and, and you know, i tell you all the time that's why we're always cutting taking the edges off because this will cut you even if it's not you think it's a 90 degree edge it's not like a sharp edge that will cut you as fast as a knife edge you know a pointed knife edge they're very sharp that's why all machinists they take these corners down um now if you were doing a gasket uh, let's say you needed to take gasket material off of a you know, a piece of area like this or something. When you lay this down here and you start pushing this up, now you can see here there's some, I don't know what even that is, you know, but you can see it's 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 taking it up and it's leaving the rest of the surface completely un, you know, without any kind of digging it in or anything or scratching or it's just taking off that outer surface and you can see how it's building it up there. And it is just, fun. and you know, you could push down a little bit, give a little weight, but when you finish using this compared to other ones, that, you know, now you can't even, if you close your eyes, you can't feel anything. And your finger's good to pick up a couple thousandths of an inch. You can't feel anything. So, uh, nice tool. I know some of you guys right now, if you've, you've seen them, you'll swear by them because a lot of the mechanics that turn wrenches, they have them already. But if you're new to this and you come across one, you see it at a flea market but, and it's cheap, pick it up. I'm just just giving you the heads up. Okay, next up, we're covering a lot of stuff today, and uh, I want to get to one of the one of the items I paid, I think, 50 cents for this, and it was, you know how I love when we find machinist-made or homemade tools, because I always feel like it's kind of got the soul of the guy who made it in there, and I like to maintain that. Look at this. Look at this cute little hammer. It's, you know, got a kind of a hollow. I said, we can do something with that, you know, because it's a little bit hollow in there, not all the way through. Some guy, maybe a machinist on his lunch break, made this hammer real quick, you know, just fooling around. Or maybe a, guy, a kid from school. Who knows? What do you say we try and clean this up and uh, pay tribute to the guy, the tool guy, that made that cool looking hammer? Okay, here we are at a post wire brush evaluation. And the reason we do the wire brushing, as you remember, to make sure if there's any markings or anything, when we go to the belt stand or a grind, we don't take them off. Check out the, uh, the knurling is real nice on there, huh? Uh, and it's just it's a nice, cute hammer. Now, you can see initials on here. It says JGC. See that? JGC. So, uh, I don't know. I'm sure, you know, he's probably still not around there. Now, it's got a little bit of mashing up here on the edges. We're going to try and take that down just to make it nice. We want to keep the original, everything about this. I mean, he did it nice. He did that little contour here. I like it. So we're not going to mess up his work. He did beautiful work. You just want to put it back to make it into a nice user hammer. And uh, let's get to, you'll take off some of the, the pitting around the barrel, the face. You can see what the face looks like. We're going to fix that up. We're going to, and then... The back here, we're going to run a brush through there. Maybe we'll do something else. I always say a set of these brushes that you get on Amazon, they're a real, real lifesaver. I cut the edge. They usually come with a rounded edge here, like this one here. I cut that off, just snip it off. And now you can put it in your drill press and make a, uh, a nice brush. And look what a nice job this will do for getting that. Do you see that rust in there? Watch what a nice job this brush will do. Okay, there you go. Nice and clean. And there's a lot of ways you could clean in there, but that does a nice job. And, uh, and again, we'll, now we'll work on getting some of these dings out of here. These dings and dents. Now, I'm showing you this in real time. What you're about to see is real time. I'm taking the, I'm beveling the edge around the hammer striking heads. And, and this is very important so that you don't chip the hammer. But it also, is for the feel of the hammer and the way the hammer performs and just working it around and using, I use my body to just tilt around and keep that angle constant. It works out really nice.
Now you can see here my buffing wheel is caked up and it needs to be dressed. So what happens, that's all caked up polish and also aluminum, whatever. I take the back five or six teeth of an old saw and I just run it across. When it gets to that where it's shiny, if you see your buffing pad is shiny, you got to do this and dress the wheel. And I'm running it just across. This is live. This is real time. I'm not speeding it up. And you can see it just takes a couple seconds. It fluffs up the wheel. And now it will accept new polish and perform much better. You have to do that every so often. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this machinist hammer looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. I have to tell you something. I had a blast doing this hammer. Best 50 cents I think I ever spent in my life. And, and a tribute to, uh, to Mr. JGC, whoever that is. But you see what he did? You see the, the translucent candy colors around the edge? You know what that's for. It's not just for looks. You see, when you make a machinist hammer and you have a double-faced hammer, usually you make two faces differently. See, the red one here is a slightly convex face, you see. And the green one is a flat face. So that's how you know when you're using it. And uh, isn't this just lovely? Look at how that came out. Look at the knurling on there. Nice, beautiful knurling. Now, what I wanted to do, believe it or not, over here, nice. I want to make a base. I want to make a base. We're going to do that for Wednesday that this could sit on because it's got this great opening, you know. So... Uh, this is the longest video I've ever made today. It's crazy long, so uh, I apologize for that, but it was just so much good content today, I think. So, anyway, what do you think of this hammer? You like the colors? You like the, uh, the candy green and candy red? I think that's just awesome. Okay, so in closing, uh, like I said, today is the longest video I ever did, and I apologize about that, but, and there weren't many Snoopy sightings today, because, uh, to be honest with you, I can't find him. I don't know where he was. He was around here somewhere before, but I... I don't know where he is, so even I lose him every once in a while. So anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day, and we'll see you again on Wednesday. Take care now. Bye-bye.